Hello and welcome to another episode of Husker Dive. I'm joined today by Sam Hybe of the Nebraska women's basketball team. Uh, Sadie's not here today. She's in the Dominican Republic, but hopefully she joins us later in the show. Thanks for coming on, Sam. How are you doing? Uh, thank you for having me. I'm doing great. Good, good. Um, so I just want to start with you're coming back for another year, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. What what all what all went into that? Um, I think ultimately, like after that last game that when we lost in the tournament, it just didn't really feel like my time here was done. And then because of COVID, we kind of got that extra opportunity to continue our college careers. So I definitely wanted to take advantage of it and stay here at Nebraska. Yeah, for sure. Um, what was that March Madness tournament? I mean, I know it didn't end the way you guys wanted to in that game, but what what was it all like? Uh, it was it was awesome. I mean, ever since I was a freshman here, that's been a goal of mine is to get to the NCAA tournament. Um, so being able to do that last year was pretty sweet, but we definitely have higher goals uh, that we want to achieve this next upcoming season. But it was definitely uh, some place to start next year or last year. Yeah, for sure. You guys you guys played Gonzaga, right? Yes. Okay, gotcha. What was it? What was it like winning the Big Ten tournament? Um. Well, we didn't win it, but. Oh, I thought you guys won it. Was that okay? That might be different. That was sport. softball. A yeah. Softball. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wish okay. we would have, but no, we didn't win it this year. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Sadie, Sadie will tell you because she, uh, she, she just hates Iowa. I don't remember if that's yeah. who got you guys out. It was Iowa, or Michigan, or something, right? Um. We lost to Iowa, yeah. Iowa, yeah. Kate, Caitlin Clark, or whatever her name is yep. from Iowa, least favorite player in the entire country. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the Iowa game, one of the last games of the regular season, that was a home game, I believe. Yeah. And it wasn't like PBA sold out for you guys? Yeah, it wasn't sold out, but we had, I think, around between eight and 9,000 fans. Okay. Uh, so it was, yeah, it was electric in there. It was awesome. Yeah, for sure. And I know that I would have loved to go to that if I wasn't in Indiana at the yeah. time. Um, but what what's it like? No, I mean, as like a female athlete, um, not getting like you guys had a very successful season. Mm -hmm. um, and I know like I talked to some of the softball players, they had a great season. And uh, even some of the gymnasts I talked to, like the men's gymnast team had a great season and whatever. What's it like sometimes not getting the support that you guys deserve? or like the fans that you guys deserve? Yeah, I think it's it's definitely been a long time coming. Um, it's not just us, like a lot yeah. of women or female athletes um, definitely sometimes don't get the support or the recognition that they deserve. Mm -hmm. um, I know just now with the thing with the ESPYs and Aaliyah Boston, that kind of unfolded, but I know Husker Nation to me is extremely special, um, mm -hmm. especially in the past couple of seasons that I've been here. They've continued to show their love and support um, for women's basketball, especially. Uh, obviously, volleyball, they're always great. And then mm -hmm. now at softball, they won the Big Ten this past season. Yeah. But being here at Nebraska is definitely, it's definitely a blessing because I know a lot of other schools, uh, especially at this level, uh, don't get that type of recognition and support like we do. Yeah, for sure. Husker Nation always shows out. Um, yeah. what, what was that like and part of the reason why you chose to come back to Nebraska for another year? Yeah, definitely. It was definitely part of my – like initial process when I chose to come here my fr my freshman year too mm -hmm. um was the fan support it's I mean we're always having four five thousand fans every single one of our games and mm -hmm. I know you don't see that everywhere um just being on visits and paying attention to the women's basketball scene uh, just around the country but yeah it was definitely a big part of my decision to stay here and then come here from the beginning yeah for sure um so this is a well we can just do this what what are like your goals post Nebraska time um, obviously it's a dream of mine to play at the next level, continue my basketball career as long as I can, mm -hmm. um, whether that be in the States here, overseas, honestly, anywhere I can go and play for however long that I can, um, mm -hmm. is my ultimate goal. I also have a degree in nutrition and exercise science, um, and I'm pursuing a master's education too. So graduate school, on um, this next coming year. So kind of working in that sports performance, um, and that type of thing too. So hopefully I can either keep playing basketball or continue to work with athletes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. What would you want to do with athletes? Um, so just kind of like the sports performance, uh, like movement screening, just making sure that athletes are healthy and performing at the best of their abilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I know at my school, it was a smaller school and they, they have a lot of guys that go, um, 
play overseas professionally. Mm-hmm. And I know for my sister too, like during her whole recruitment and everything and um, like her talking about or getting talked to about like profession, professional options mm-hmm. overseas. That's, I mean, I feel like that's kind of grown. And I, from what I understand, women's basketball is very popular overseas, like in Europe and stuff. I heard like, like it's a pretty big deal there. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, like being from the U.S., you want to play in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Uh, so your family and everything can be there. But no, the overseas game is definitely growing. There's some very good leagues there. Um, like a lot of WNBA players play overseas during the winter when they're not in oh. the season here. So yeah, it's definitely nothing to joke about. It's pretty legit over there as well. Yeah, for sure. I didn't know that, that they play both in the WNBA yeah, and overseas. Year round. <laughs> Dang, yeah, no off season. <laughs> Shoot. I yep. guess you got to love the game then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, so far at Nebraska, not just like in basketball, but what's been your favorite thing about being at Nebraska? I mean, it could be basketball, but. Uh, obviously being with my teammates and my coaches and everything, mm-hmm. that's a huge part of why I'm here is basketball. But honestly, Lincoln's like a huge college town. So just the atmosphere, like football is crazy. Um, just being out there, 90,000 fans, uh, mm-hmm. it's definitely like kind of a shock to the system when you're not used to that. But, and then obviously like being in the real yard and things like that during the games. But I would just say like the college feel here, um, we're very much supported just because there's no pro sports in Nebraska, mm-hmm. uh, things like that. So just kind of the atmosphere in Lincoln. Yeah, for sure. Um, so like, what would, what would you consider your hobbies to be outside of basketball? um well a few of them I can't really do anymore I I used to snowboard a lot skateboard Mm -hmm. um be outside like all the time um but I got my guitar here at home I still play that a little bit um just kind of hanging out with my team uh we'll just go to people's houses or whatever Mm -hmm. uh hanging out with other sports things like that so yeah crazy so you you grew up in Minnesota correct yep so is that where you picked up snowboarding yeah (laughs) yep (laughs) So you don't, you must not hate winter then. No, I'm used to just bitter cold. So I don't, I, I like winter, I would say. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. So so where would you live then if you could live anywhere? Would you go to someplace with winter? Yeah, I think I'd probably want to stay in the Midwest. I've never been to the mountains. I've only done like the Minnesota, like Duluth area. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the biggest we got. They have pretty big stuff, but it's nowhere like Colorado, Montana. But I think that'd be pretty cool to live out there. Yeah, for sure. Just kind of yeah. eat all the seasons, I guess. I think like you're like one of the f- few people I know that would like want to live somewhere <laughs> where it snows. <laughs> I can't do the heat all year round. It's not for me. So. Hey, I feel that. I mean, I yeah. hate winter, but if it was <laughs> 90 degrees in the winter, that yeah, would be tough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. Um, so, I mean, I feel like all college athletes, especially at the Division One level with how busy you guys are, have to have some way to like kind of stay grounded and like realize that you guys are also just college students like you're college students who play a sport and you're not like like I just feel like there has to be a way for you to not get too caught up in your sport and like too caught up in being an athlete so how how do you do that uh it's definitely challenging sport like basketball where pretty much playing and practicing all year round. Like I know Mm -hmm. all my whole team is here right now. We've been here since the beginning of June, still working out. Um, So it definitely is challenging, especially when we're traveling during the school year and still trying to do schoolwork and take exams in the road and things like that. But Mm -hmm. in the summer, we still, we have our weekends off, things like that. I know people go home. I have friends from my hometown that might come down here Mm -hmm. um, a couple of times in the summer. So just kind of like remembering that we're still kids, like it is a job being a college athlete but Mm -hmm. still try to like enjoy the times that we have off yeah for sure I bet so what what are your favorite things to do with your friends then when they come down to Lincoln yeah I just kind of like show them around I mean they don't have like they haven't experienced what I've experienced so just showing them the facilities like what we use for basketball and like football stadium things like that and then just hanging out but basically just kind of showing them what Lincoln's about I guess yeah for sure um what what was it like then growing up in Minnesota cold (laughs) really cold I'm from like the northwest part so like three hours from Canada so yeah right next to Fargo North Dakota 
So it's it's a lot colder than like the Minneapolis St. Paul. <laughs> so you're from like the cold, cold. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like three and a half, four hours from Minneapolis area. So Dang. Yeah, it's cold. It's cold. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it'll be cold too, like till March. Oh February, my goodness. March, like, yeah. Yes, yeah, so Nebraska is nothing for you. Lately, it has not been. Like, we barely got any snow here, so. It hasn't been too bad for me, but my some of my teammates would say otherwise. Yeah, like the ones from Australia. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> California kids. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, this is kind of a fun question, but I just have to ask. Now I brought up the teammates from Australia. So yeah. when Izzy Bourne was on, we talked to her about like if there was a zombie apocalypse, which teammates would you like want by your side, like helping you survive, and which ones would just die right away? Like which ones would not make it? And I forget her. I think she said Jazz Shelley would not make it. And I think oh, she that she said. I think she said you would be at, by her side. <laughs> I take um, Izzy too. I take her. Okay. Okay. Um, That's what you do. Yeah. Izzy and hmm. maybe Ani. Sure, I'd be okay. all right. Okay. Um, Jazz wouldn't make it. Alexis <laughs> wouldn't make it. Um. Kendall Moriarty probably wouldn't make it. All right, both Kendalls actually. Yeah, a lot of my team wouldn't wouldn't do so well. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, <laughs> sometimes they lack a little skill in like the like I don't know. If there's an apocalypse, they wouldn't know what to do. They wouldn't know what to bring. <laughs> <laughs> That's they might just accept fate at that point. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, ah, oh, it was a good run. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's funny. Would you go back? Where would you go? Would you go back up to Minnesota? Yeah, to, well, can over zombies by Fargo? Survive? Yeah, like in the bitter cold. <laughs> yeah, where there's not many people. <laughs> right. We'll go back. I guess we'll go back home for that then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So this this is another one that's like a little bit more serious. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we can get into more of the fun questions, but who would you consider your role models or like who influenced you the most both growing up and then also as a basketball player both personally and as an athlete uh definitely my parents like personally um like I said like I was doing everything that I possibly could as a kid like every sport they let me try anything Mm -hmm. um and I was just kind of always outside like hanging out with the boys playing baseball football whatever skateboarding Mm -hmm. um and then for basketball I had a coach when I was younger from like second to fifth grade um, who really kind of, I guess, recognized probably the talent that I could have in the future um, and kind of helped me grow my love for that. And then um, I guess playing AAU for North Tartan helped me get to Nebraska. Uh, so being a part of that and then the sacrifices my parents had to make to, we were traveling to the cities every weekend throughout the summer. So driving eight hour round trips leaving Friday getting back Sunday that's definitely a big sacrifice for them um so just grateful for that experience um but then like as a player I looked up to Lindsey Whalen and Maya Mm -hmm. Moore a lot um both or Whalen's a Minnesota kid played for the Gophers um and then they both played for the Minnesota Lynx so I followed them a ton when I was growing up um but other than that I guess kind of those like female moguls I guess I would say yeah for sure yeah that's awesome and I know you touched on AAU like I don't think I mean both my sister and I played AAU I don't think that many people understand like how big of a sacrifice it is like you said how your parents gave those big sacrifices especially if you're playing on a national team or like if you're in the EYBL circuit or something you're gone three four (laughs) days a week at tournaments and then and then staying at hotels and I'm just playing all these crazy tournaments. What, what was your experience with AAU like? Um, so like for me, since I live so far from the Minneapolis St. Paul area, I, I started playing North Heart when I was in seventh grade and they're like a UIBL team. So it was pretty legit. Mm-hmm. Um, like the first year, like I didn't know anyone. I'm kind of like an out of state school or whatever. And that's where the club is centered is in Minneapolis. So they like, I think they asked me, I was playing for like a local team from kids from my high school, maybe. And they Mm kind of asked if I wanted to join them. And I did, but honestly, like one of the greatest, most fun experiences of my career, I guess I would say. Um, I love my teammates throughout. I pretty much have the same team from seventh to my 
junior year of high school. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved all my teammates. They ultimately got me to where I am today. Um, but yeah, it definitely is a huge commitment, especially for me because I was commuting so much uh, every weekend. <laughs> I had no summer. All my friends were at the lake. I was always on the road, either mm-hmm. practicing or in a tournament somewhere across the country, but Mm -hmm. I wouldn't change it for the world, uh, especially because of the goals and aspirations I had for myself. It definitely was a huge stepping stone in that direction. Yeah, for sure. And like you said, that's probably like a big reason why you are where you are today is not just because of like, I mean, yeah, like playing AAU and EYBL is a big deal, but then um, having those great teammates that you got to play with. I don't think many people play with the same AAU team for that long. Like that's pretty rare, I feel like. It was pretty cool. I mean, we had a few kids that would like leave, go to a different team. Um, I know I had a, one of my good friends in the team ended up moving to California, but for the most part, it was like a core, like six, seven of us that would stay that I mm-hmm. played with throughout my whole time at North Harden. Dang, that's sweet. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit of a different question. So I see in your background there, you got all those different artists up on your wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's your favorite? Post Malone right here. He's my okay. Guy. Okay. Yeah. I see you got yeah. Russ there too. Not many people. Not many people show too much love for Russ. Yeah, he's a little dark horse. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of a. I like the alternative vibe. Mm-hmm. Not really like super heavy. Like I listen to rap, I guess. But yeah, Post Malone, Russ, Khalid a little bit. So mm-hmm. okay. What What's your favorite yeah. song? From Post Malone. Or any song, I guess. Oh, uh, that's hard. This album is my favorite from him, the Stony mm-hmm. one. Song though. Hmm. maybe go flex okay yeah i don't know he doesn't really miss so it's hard to pick <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> hard to pick <laughs> yeah what, what's your uh what's your go-to either song or like what what's your pre-game routine um i used to get mcdonald's before every before game but game. then they yeah so like we would have like a shoot around like three and a half hours before we'd play or four hours and then i go eat after that they give us food but i would just like get mcdonald's but then they started they stopped serving breakfast all the time mm-hmm. and i would always get the hot cakes so then they stopped doing that so i kind of stopped getting the mcdonald's but when i was younger it'd always be like two eggo waffles with peanut butter um like a little pre-game meal <laughs> my dad would always make it yeah <laughs> but other than that it's nothing like i might have homework that i have to get done before mm-hmm. it's nothing too special okay uh yeah other than that I don't think that's wild I'm surprised that Nebraska coaches would let you do that <laughs> oh yeah they, we always joke about it <laughs> get the like McDonald's get there for McDonald's <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny mm-hmm. oh man all right um so I, I'm gonna guess that I know this answer but if you could hang out with one celebrity who who would it be for a day would it be Post Malone yeah i'd be up there <laughs> all right all right who who besides him i, I don't know it kind of depend i'm a big kevin durant fan okay it would kind of depend on the, like the mood i'm in i guess mm-hmm. would i yeah i don't know like an athlete celebrity or like an a-list celebrity i don't know <laughs> okay hey that's fair um so kevin durant yeah he, he gets hate but i love he him. does get hate so do you think <laughs> Do you think that he – do you think it was a good move for him to have gone to the Warriors? Like, do you think that hurt his his legacy to go to the Warriors? If we're being honest with ourselves, anyone would have done that. Like, I'm going to go to the Warriors. I'm already really good. I'm going to mm-hmm. win a championship. Like, career-wise, awesome move. <laughs> yeah. It can't really hurt you to win a championship, but – but I feel like it um, hurt his legacy a little bit yeah. because now everybody's like, he just got carried to the championship and left. Not everyone's LeBron either where they can create like, I don't know, <laughs> franchise teams around one player and make yeah. everyone better. But no, I'm a, I've always been a KD fan since I was young. So. Okay. I, oh, he used to be my favorite player when him and Westbrook were together on the thunder. Yeah. Okay. He so went to a thunder Harden, game. But... Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Those I'm going to ride with him. So. Oh, well, okay. whatever else says. <laughs> so you hoping he gets traded now out of Brooklyn? Yeah, we'll see. Wherever he goes, I'm happy. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, so if you had to build your all-time starting five, then who would it be? Oh, geez, that's a tough – like anyone ever that mm-hmm. played in the NBA. <laughs> that's hard. <laughs> I got to I gotta take – oh, gosh. <laughs> I got to take LeBron as much as I hate to say it. Yeah. MJ. 
Uh, and then I'm like thinking position wise. I don't know. <laughs> well, you're a point really guard. You got to pick a good point guard. Yeah. Magic, I guess, is up there. Okay. Steph, maybe. Not maybe. I guess Steph Curry should be in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, five players. Oh, that's really tough. I need a center, don't I? Hmm. I don't know. Dr. J was a useless. Center. Game. Center is the easiest. That's Shaq. All day. <laughs> Jokic, I guess. I don't know. Jokic would be good. All yeah. right. You got to have Giannis in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Not really a true center, but you could put that's him in really before. Yeah. <laughs> LeBron can play anywhere. That's true. I want to okay. take LeBron in mind just because I feel like the best teams, everybody has their role, like as a role player. Like that's why the Spurs were so good. Because if everybody can know their role, then like, I just feel like that just helps. Even if LeBron is better than four of the five players on the team, yeah, I, I might not take him. Because I, I think I would take Durant before I take okay. LeBron at the yeah. three. So I'd put <laughs> Curry at the one, Magic or uh, Michael Jordan at the two. Yep. Durant at the three for height and because he's a shooter. And I feel like with yeah. Steph, you just need one more shooter. And then I'd put Giannis at the four and Shaq at the yeah. five for size. Okay. I like the honest too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, which of the guys basketball team, how many of them could you beat in a game of horse? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, first of all, I have a bad shoulder, so oh. zero of them right now. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. They, I don't want them to take it personally or anything. I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All and right. they can't dunk because that's not fair either. I can't dunk. That's true. I just feel like Casey would be the hard one to. Yeah, I, I also can't shoot from the logo. <laughs> It'd be fun, right. though. It'd be yeah, fun. yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, so you talked about AU and EYBL a little bit. What's like the wildest, craziest story that you have from an AAU tournament? Uh, if you have one. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I was so we were supposed to play. I think it was Nike Nationals. Uh, the Cal Stars was like a really good team um, when I was going to be a senior, I guess. And we got out there. One of my teammates, um, she had moved to California. So she had she's with she's with the Cal Stars at that point. So we were like excited to play them or whatever. And we get there and their best player was just nowhere to be found. So we're like, oh, okay. Like we might actually win this game here. Like got some <laughs> confidence. She never showed up. But then I remember one girl just completely torched us like took drew like tore us apart was just going crazy and then i found out it was Haley jones who plays at stanford now um so she yeah she was must have been playing up or something but she just ran all over us did her thing uh and then well deserved i guess because national champ stanford all that yeah um but yeah, it was fun. I got to meet. I don't know if do you watch like the Little League World Series or did you ever? I do. I do. I used to a lot more. I don't as much now. Do you know who Monet Davis is? The I think I've pitcher. heard that name. Girl pitcher. I'm pretty sure she she might be my age now. I I feel like I've seen highlights on like Twitter or something, but I don't know if I ever yeah. watched her live. So yeah, I played baseball growing up, so I remember watching her. But I actually got to meet her at an AU tournament. I think oh, that's I was sweet. Like Fourteen at the time, yeah. So that was cool. That is cool. Other than that, yeah, other than that, everything was – it was fun. I just – AAU was awesome. <laughs> it really is. Like, you was tra- like – have travel. You got you to travel. You have a lot of fun with your teammates in the hotels and stuff. And right, yeah. It's, play four games a day. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Who, no, who's, I love it. Yeah, who's the best player you played against in AAU? Um, well, Haley Jones. Um, I never played against Sedona Prince. We were like gonna, but I think one of us lost in like a tournament, so it didn't mm. match up. I'm trying to think who else was like pretty high up in my class. I guess Caitlin Clark, I played against her a lot. Okay. Um, Paige in high school, just because she's from Minnesota, Paige Beckers. Um, I'm sure like I can't think of it now, but if someone said anything, like I'd be like, yeah, I probably played them. Yeah. Anyone left sure. in my class, ultimately. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's here's a different question. So you have the entire weekend free, no basketball commitments, no money's not an issue. What (laughs) are like what are you with you? You're like with all your best friends and stuff. What are you guys doing for the whole weekend? Can I travel or do I stay? Yeah, you can travel. You can go wherever. 
I've always wanted to go to New York, so I think I'd go there because okay. money isn't an issue. Yeah, so. money's not an issue. <laughs> I might take a trip to New York for the weekend. Okay. What would you guys do? Just hang out, go downtown? Yeah, see Times Square a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's, it seems really busy down there, but I think I once I got there, did it for a weekend, I'd be cool. But, yeah. It seems like a lot happening. But. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right. Um, this is a question we ask everybody that comes on: Chipotle or Qdoba? Qdoba. I hate Chipotle. How do you hate Chipotle? I've been there like three times, and every time it makes me sick, so I can't go back. Oh, that's fair then. <laughs> mm-hmm. What about what about agave? People have brought that up. Oh, that's very good. Yeah, I like oh. agave too. What's your I'm favorite? a I'm a. Do you know what Pancheros is? Mm-mm. It's. I think the closest one to Lincoln is like Sioux Falls, maybe, but it's okay. pretty much like a Qdoba Chipotle. That's good. my spot. But after that, it'd be Qdoba, Agave, and then Chipotle, like under the dirt, just <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. All right. What was your go-to at Qdoba then? Uh, I think it's like the three cheese nachos. Oh. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. It's basically like a bowl, but you get more queso. <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah and they yep. have the free queso there so i guess yeah <laughs> all right um so this is a question i've never asked anybody i just thought of it today i thought it'd be kind of fun so all if right. you had if like a complete stranger walked up to you from like i don't know never heard of basketball before never like has very little experience in sports and you had to try to explain the game of basketball to somebody in 30 seconds like what it was <laughs> what would you say round ball and there's two goals and you got to throw the round ball into a goal your goal i guess <laughs> that works <laughs> yeah that's it you don't need to include anything else obviously <laughs> the game is to put the ball in the hole so <laughs> <laughs> i just there think it's go. it's like so funny how the game started with like a peach basket or whatever right. it was. <laughs> it's just wild to me like how do people think of this <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay um what is your favorite team building activity Hmm, that's a good question we did one with our like sports psychologist it involved jenga okay. and it was kind of like a. it was i don't know it's hard to explain so we played jenga but there was also like challenges involved so like one of them was you can only pull the brick out with your off hand or like we got to blast music while you're pulling it out or stick your hand in cold water and pull it out it's things like that so i hmm. think that definitely helped us come together like encourage each other oh yeah that's cool Mm -hmm. that's cool um okay um what is you said you want to go to new york for a weekend but what is your dream vacation i guess you could other than new york um dream vacation probably an island somewhere greece would be cool like mykonos i guess i went to we went to italy my sophomore year as a team and oh wow Spain yeah so that was cool yeah probably I've been to Mexico a few times maybe an island I don't know yeah That's- somewhere in Europe or in the Caribbean I guess <laughs> yeah for sure um yeah I saw on your Instagram that you guys a bunch of you guys went down to Miami last year a couple yeah. years ago or whatever and I saw you guys were jet skiing in the ocean <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's just scary to me <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it was me izzy jazz and then my best friend from home and then izzy's sister her boyfriend i think jazz's boyfriend was there too so it was like seven of us uh went there i think we were there for like seven nights so it was a while but Dang. it was extremely hot we went in may it was very hot but we did get to do uh some pretty cool things we went to the everglades uh, the jet skiing was cool. We did that for like two hours. It was pretty fun. Did you um, see any sharks? No. <laughs> Saw the nightlife a little bit. That was interesting. Um, other than that, just kind of hung out at the beach, I guess. Yeah. So um, does ocean life scare you? No, I'm a scuba diver. <laughs> Stop. Another thing that I can add to the resume. <laughs> You're a scuba diver? Yep, certified and everything. Have you gone? Yeah. So my whole my parents have been divers probably for like 40 years now um and they got me and my brother into it I think I was first certified when I was like 13 and then I got my advanced certification when I was 15 and then I've been to Mexico twice with my family to scuba dive 
what's the craziest thing you've seen scuba diving then? Um, well, we went on a few night dives. That was, it was kind of nerve wracking, but it was really cool. Cause a lot of different fish come out. Like we saw squid. That was cool. Um, sea turtles. Uh, I saw a shark the first, my first time I was there. That was scary. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but other than that, like the reefs are like beautiful. The angel fish there under the water is just insane. And it's so clear. Like it's basically like you're above sea level. Um, and the water's warm so yeah it was sweet <laughs> Dang, that is like my worst fear is like the open ocean <laughs> like if I was stranded in the open ocean I'd be terrified so just scuba diving yeah, yeah just, you know you know that scene in Finding Nemo where like they're in the water and you just hear the whale from a distance <laughs> like you see it like in the open ocean that is my worst fear <laughs> <laughs> no it's cool it's definitely like a like not many people can say they've done it no um and like it wasn't like a tourist thing. Like we're actually certified. So my parents, like we went on the vacation to scuba dive. Uh, so like we, we just get on a boat, basically there's probably 20 of us on a boat and then there's a one dive master. So we all like get our takes up and everything. And then it's like an hour and a half, two hour dive. So you go into the middle of the ocean, like they have their destinations where they know where the reefs are at and everything. Mm-hmm. So you go in and then they kind of guide you like underwater on like a path basically. And then you just resurface and then the boat comes and picks you up. And then you hang out for like another three hours because you got to decompress and everything. Yeah. And then you go back down for another dive. So it's like two dives a day. And then if you under the night dive, you come out before sunset and then you go into the water before it's dark. And then when you come up, it's like pitch black. That yeah. <laughs> is crazy. <laughs> it's definitely an experience. That's for sure. Dang. Well, I have two questions at the end that I always ask everybody. But before I ask that, is there anything else that we should know about you like that? that you're a scuba <laughs> diver? <laughs> um, yeah, dive, snowboarded. I skateboarded like competitively, I guess you could say. Oh. When I was little. I was in a competition. Um, other than that, like I've really tried it all. Ice hockey. A lot of my good friends play college hockey right now. So wow, I grew up like playing pond hockey outside, and it's kind of definitely a Minnesota thing for sure. But did you guys pretty, do broom ball too? <laughs> What'd you say? Do you guys do broom ball too? Um, I've done it, but probably for the stick and puck. <laughs> yeah, dang, that is you. You've done it all, really. <laughs> yep, played baseball throughout high school. So yeah. Wow, baseball, not softball. Yeah, with the boys. <laughs> wow. What position were you? Pitcher and outfield. Dang. Okay. Well, what was your favorite pitch to throw? I was definitely a fastball kid. More, I wasn't like outpowering any of these boys, but just focus on the location and things like that. But Dang. It's fun. That, yeah. That's sweet. <laughs> you really have done a ton that nobody else can say <laughs> they've done. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. My parents let me try everything. I have an older brother too. So, of course, whatever he did, I wanted to try. So, yeah. For sure. (laughs) Dang, that's sweet. All right. Well, these last two questions um are just something that we ask everybody. So if you could give one piece of life advice to Husker fans, what would that be? And then what is something that you want to tell Nebraska fans? It can be anything. Um, one piece of advice. Mm -hmm. I would like live in the moment. Time flies. I'm already going like my fifth year of college. I feel like just yesterday I was a little freshman coming in in the summer. Um, so just kind of enjoy your time enjoy the moment Mm -hmm. and to Husker fans y'all are awesome like keep doing what you're doing we appreciate you I know I appreciate you you're one of the reasons why I came here in the first place but can't wait for next year next season and we're excited yeah for sure well thank you for coming on and good luck this next year you guys are going to do great um you have all Husker Nation behind you guys and hopefully we can uh, make it out to a game or two awesome thank you so much this was fun yeah thank you Have a good day. You too.